Okay, we're on January 2022, end of year exam for AS Maths. This is the Stats and Mechanics exam. So we're on the beginning of the mechanics. A time t equals zero, a small throne is thrown, stone is thrown vertically upwards. So if you're trying to model it, it's going to go up and down. It starts from A. The initial speed is 14.7 metres per second. Okay, at time t is taken, the process passes, so it's kind of gone up and it's gone down again, but we're, we're doing this over time, so over time it's moving across. Um, so that would be t, and then it passes down, so actually it passes down. So that's interesting. So the graph is going to, we're going to find this is useful, believe it or not. So basically you could be up high and you've thrown it up and it's gone down past where you are. So we've gone into, um, and given... As we know, velocity is a vector, so therefore it uh, has a uh, direction and magnitude. So we're now, because it's gone up and this is going down past you, you can, you can picture it, hopefully. Right. Um, the stone is modelled as a particle, and so I have to see what size the stone is, and moving freely under gravity. Lovely. Using the model, find the value for t. Okay. So this is moving under gravity. Gravity is a constant acceleration. So it's got no force pushing it up or pushing it down other than gravity. So this is a constant acceleration question, which means you can only use SUVAT. Okay, so let's write SUVAT down and see what we've got and see if we can make any use of it. Okay, so we want to find the time t when it comes back past A, which means overall distance or displacement is zero. So it's gone up and come back down. It's done in, in a particular time. We've only got gravity. So we've said up is positive at 14.7. So gravity must be negative because it's coming down. So up is positive. And so gravity is pushing down. So we don't have V. Where's my equations? Can I never remember them? Okay, so it's the equation without V. So it's S equals UT plus half AT squared. S equals UT plus half AT squared. So S is zero, U is 14.7, T is capital T plus a half minus 9.8 capital T squared. So that's 4.9, so I'm going to bring that over the other side. So I've got 4.9 T squared minus 14.7 T equals zero. With only two terms, I can only use one bracket, and I'm going to just take t. I don't know if there's a factor anywhere else, but it just doesn't look like it. And then I'm going to use my... So now I can already see t is 0, and then 4.9t minus 14.7 must also be 0. So 4.9t equals 14.7. So t must equal 14.7 divided by 4.9, which gives us a lovely number. Who knew? t is 3. Now, we obviously know t is 0 because that's where we started, but now we know that this t is 3. So, good. we got t equals 3. Perfect. Seconds we're talking about as well. Find the total distance. Now, they've mentioned distance, so that's interesting. In the stone, the first three seconds of motion. Now, weirdly, 4 must be about here on my diagram. So, we want this area and this area, because the area under the curve is the distance or displacement. If I integrate just from 4, oh, I can't integrate. If I, oh, I should be able to work it out. So the total distance travelled by the stone in the first 4 seconds. So the distance travelled is up and down. Displacement will just be what we get out here. So this will be a negative displacement. So let me see if I can show you what I mean. Okay, so if we're looking at displacement, okay, or it doesn't matter. So to be fair, maybe the graph doesn't matter, but it will matter when you get your answer. So B, first four seconds. So I'm going to put T as four. So I've got SUVAT again, because that's all I've got. So SUVAT, that's got to be four. Still working under negative gravity. Uh, we've still got 14.7. And I actually want to know... <laughs> The distance or the displacement this time. So it's the same equation. So s equals ut plus a half at squared. So it equals 14.7 times 4 plus a half times minus 9.8 times 4 squared. 
So my S comes out as 14.7 times 4 plus 0.5 times 9 less than 1.8 times bracket times 4 squared. Hmm. Sure, it wasn't supposed to be that. Sure, I got something different. I'm going to do that again because that is weird. Ah, 14.7, not 17.4. That's it, 14.7. There we go. So, you get minus 19.6 metres, which is exactly what we've, from our diagram, we can see. We've gone up positive, we've come back to zero, we've gone underneath. So the displacement is negative, but the distance is 19.6 metres. So... But that isn't the total distance travel, it's gone up and down. So what we need to do is to find out what's the max, what's the distance travelled when they get to the maximum point here. So another, another, see that is required. So we need to work out for this one, see that. At the max, we want the distance. We still know that gravity is minus 9.8. We don't know the time, or we do know the time in a way, but I'm not going to use it because some of you won't like to do this. But because it's um, kind of up and down, it does it in the same time. One and a half would be fine, but I'm going to ignore time this time. We know the final velocity is zero and the initial velocity is 14.7. Okay, so using that, the one without time is v squared equals u squared plus 2as, so v squared equals u squared plus 2as, v squared is 0, 14.7 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times s, which we don't know, so we have minus 14.7 squared over here equals minus 4.9s, so divide minus 14.7 squared divided by 4.9. Nope, done that wrong as well, have I? Nope, that came out right before. Oh, hold on. No. Yeah, no, it's not. We're four out. 14.7 squared divided by 4.9. Ah, it's two times. That's me. It's not 4.9, is it? 16 point something. So 9.8 times 2. That way. 19.6. That way around. So yeah. Right. So 14.7 squared divided by 19.6 will give me a distance of 11.025. Now. So, and the reason it's still minus here was because we were taken away negative. So we're going to yeah, work that out, bring it across, divide by that makes it positive. So that's the up, but it's got to come down. So we need two lots of that distance. So two lots of 11.025 plus this distance, 19.6, will give us the total distance travelled. 11.025 times 2 plus 19.6 gives me 41.65 uh, metres. And because we did use gravity, we really only need two significant figures. Cool. Uh, the last bit, take one refinement. Well, usually with this, I would go with gravity because we've just discussed it. It's two, disc uh, two so a more accurate value for gravity. Um, the other one that's interesting is that we modelled the stone as a particle. So um, let's put more accurate G. And then it's not a particle, it's a stone. So you've got a couple of things there. When we model something as a particle, it's not allowed to spin, which is an issue. And also, um, the uh, if it's a particle, the mass is in the centre. And of course, we don't know the shape of the stone. So that could be an issue. But I think one of the easiest ones to go to is just like a more accurate G.